Nico de Moscarfo was an American mob boss who led the Philadelphia crime family from 1981 to 1991. Despite his small stature, he was known for his violent and tyrannical leadership style, even during his years as an amateur boxer, earning him the nickname Little Nicky. Scarfo was convicted of multiple crimes, including racketeering, extortion, and murder. He was sentenced to multiple terms in prison and died in federal custody in 2017. He was widely considered one of the most vicious and ruthless mobsters in the history of organized crime in the United States. Scarfo was born on March 8, 1929, in Brooklyn, New York, to Italian immigrants from Naples and Calabria, Philip and Catherine Scarfo. Scarfo and his family moved to South Philadelphia when he was 12 years old, where he worked as a day laborer before graduating from Benjamin Franklin High School in 1947. He became an amateur boxer, fighting in small clubs throughout Philadelphia and earning a reputation in the ring for his aggressive demeanor. Scarfo joined his uncle Nicky Buck, a Philly mob soldier, in illegal activities in Philadelphia after failing to become a boxing success. While being apprenticed by Buck, he also worked as a bartender at a club owned by his uncle, alongside his two other uncles. Scarfo was proposed for membership in the Philadelphia crime family in 1954. He was inducted as a full-fledged soldier alongside two of his uncles at a ceremony held in New Jersey by then-boss Joseph Ida. Scarfo was reportedly arrogant and stubborn, having refused to marry Consigliere Joe Runieta's daughter, leaving him embarrassed and disrespected and briefly causing family strife. Scarfo pleaded guilty to manslaughter in 1963 after fatally stabbing a longshoreman. He served about six months in prison. After his release, Angelo Bruno assigned him to oversee operations in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Scarfo was imprisoned for nearly two years from 1971 to 1973 for refusing to testify before the New Jersey State Commission of Investigation. He was imprisoned alongside Genovese crime family members Gerardo Catina and Louis Mana, with whom he developed a close relationship. Scarfo prioritized gambling as his primary source of income after Atlantic City legalized gambling in 1976. Atlantic City was considered a backwater at the time he was sent there. Scarfo, on the other hand, rose to prominence as a gambling mecca. As developers constructed brand new casinos in Atlantic City, Scarfo's cement contracting business, Scarf Incorporated, which he co-owned with his nephew, received business by Scarfo intimidating other businesses into buying from his company. Judge Edwin Helfand was shot and killed in 1978 by Scarfo and his associate, Nicholas Nick the Blade Virgilio, for refusing to work with them and to assist Virgilio in receiving a lesser sentence as he was facing murder charges in exchange for $12,500. The getaway driver during the hit was Scarfo. Virgilio fired numerous rounds into the judge as he dined with his wife in a restaurant. He made it a public execution and made him an example to anyone that wasn't willing to give him what he wanted. Vincent Falcone, a criminal associate and contractor, was shot twice and killed in 1979 on orders from Scarfo by his nephew Phil Leonetti after making disparaging remarks about the business and Scarfo. In 1980, longtime boss Angelo Bruno was assassinated. His consigliere, Antonio Caponegro, planned his murder. Weeks later, Antonio was forced to deal with the repercussions of killing a boss without the American Mafia Commission's consent. He was discovered in a car trunk, shot multiple times, with $300 in bills shoved into his mouth and anus as a symbol of his own greed. The Philadelphia crime family's new boss, Phil Testa, named Scarfo as his consigliere but he wouldn't hold the position of boss for very long. On the orders of his underboss and drug dealer Peter Casella and capo Frank Naducci Sr., Testa was killed in 1981 by a nail bomb planted under his porch. This led to Naducci's murder and Casella's expulsion from the mob and flight to Florida. War sparked within the family after Testa's murder. 
Scarfo ascended to the top spot, elevating Frank Monti to the position of consigliere and Salvatore Merlino to that of his underboss. Scarfo would later go on to rule the family for a decade while going on a violent, murderous rampage. He served time at the Federal Correctional Institution, La Tuna, for possessing a gun between August 1982 and January 1984. He always had two bodyguards with him, who were associates of the Mexican Mafia, whom he referred to as his pistoleros. During that time, aging capo Harry Riccobene began to form another faction that opposed Scarfo. In 1927, Riccobene became a soldier under Prohibition mob boss Salvatore Isabella and saw the wave of violence that began with the unsanctioned murder of Philadelphia crime boss Angelo Bruno and Philip Testa, Bruno's replacement. For control of the family's operations in Atlantic City, New Jersey, Riccobene then led a faction against Scarfo. Frank Monti, a Scarfo consigliere, told his crew that he was going to kill Riccobene and take over his illegal gambling and loan sharking businesses. Riccobene's half brother Mario Riccobene was approached by Monti, who demanded that Mario arrange for Riccobene to be killed. But by revealing the scheme to Riccobene, Mario betrayed Monti. Rico Bene was furious and gave Mario and the hitmen Joseph Pedula and Victor De Luca the order to kill Monty. Get them before they get us, Rico Bene said. In anticipation of Monty getting into his parked Cadillac, Mario, Pedula, and De Luca set up camp in a van nearby. A few hours later, Monty came out and started getting into his car. Monty was killed by Pedula's three shots. Later, the men made another unsuccessful attempt to kill Phil Testa's son Salvatore Testa, but this time, police apprehended them. Mario, Harry's brother, turned government informant. First-degree murder charges led to Rico Benez's indictment, and he was later given a life sentence. Scarfo plotted to extort $1 million from major commercial developer Willard Rouse in 1985, enlisting the help of his soldier Nicholas Caramandi and another associate. Rouse refused and called the FBI right away. The FBI launched an investigation into Scarfo, sending an undercover agent to pose as a representative of Rouse. As a result, Caramandi, a well-known and feared hitman, agreed to cooperate and testify against the organization. Scarfo was convicted three times between 1987 and 1989 for conspiracy, racketeering, and first-degree murder, and was sentenced to 14 years, 55 years, and life in prison, though the life sentence was later overturned. Scarfo's nephew, Phil Leonetti, whom he promoted to underboss in 1986, also turned state's evidence after a RICO conviction in 1989. Scarfo's son, Mark Scarfo, attempted suicide on November 1, 1988, during the trial that followed. Mark, who was only 17 at the time, had been taunted about his father's criminal activities by classmates for years. He hanged himself in the office of his father's concrete supply company in Atlantic City, despondent over his father's possible imprisonment. His mother discovered him and paramedics were able to resuscitate him, but suffered a cardiac arrest and his brain was starved of oxygen, which led him to enter into a coma until his death in April 2014. Scarfo began his sentence at the Federal Penitentiary in Atlanta and was later transferred to the Federal Medical Center in Butner, North Carolina, where he died on January 13, 2017, of natural causes.